Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I'd like to uh, recognize Hispanic Heritage Month. On uh, May 5, 2015, Bill 28 was passed, proclaiming October as Hispanic Heritage Month. And Ontarians of Hispanic descent have left and continue to leave an historic mark on our province with over 400,000 Hispanic Latin Canadians residing here. And Speaker, I have the privilege of being the Ontario Progressive Conservative Caucus Liaison for the Hispanic community in the Greater Toronto Area and participate in several events within that community. And I encourage all Ontarians to participate in the celebrations this month and learn about the vibrant Hispanic community's people, food and arts. We live in a province where different cultures are valued, as it is our diversity that strengthens our collectively as a province. And I look forward to continuing to work with the Hispanic community on our shared journey towards building a better Ontario. On behalf of the Ontario Progressive Conservative Caucus, I'd like to wish the Hispanic community a joyful Heritage Month. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Kenora Rainier River. Thank you, Speaker. On the heels of World Teacher Day, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize two of the many outstanding educators I have in my riding of Kenora Rainier River. Thomas Doherty is a native language teacher at St. John Catholic School in Red Lake who was recently recognized for being the best of the best in the province. He was awarded the Teaching Award for Excellence by the Ontario Teachers Insurance Plan for his uh, creative approach to teaching language. Key to the success of his teaching is the, and the work that he does is encouraging his students to embrace and take pride in their culture. A lifelong Northerner, Mr. Doherty is proof that Northerners are leaders in Ontario. Andy Kennedy is a grade five teacher at Open Roads Public School in Dryden who uses superheroes to teach model values and who teaches through creativity and play. His math program allows students to build Lego robots, and at the start of the school year, his students created their own video game avatar, which tracks their class participation and behavior through experience points. Some of Mr. Kennedy's most inspirational work is around empathy, teaching his students to, quote, be somebody that makes everybody feel like a somebody. It, his class created a video that is the most powerful inoculation against bullying I have ever seen. I would like to offer my thanks and appreciation for the outstanding work that these and all educators do right across Ontario. They are an inspiration to us all and are helping to shape a very fine generation. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, this year marks the 100th anniversary since my home riding changed its name from Berlin to Kitchener. And with Oktoberfest starting tomorrow, it is the perfect time to talk about the German Mennonites who settled the community. Recently, we hosted an Oktoberfest event here at the Legislature for the German-Canadian Community of Ontario to celebrate their culture and their heritage. Very soon, in my home riding, many more kegs are going to be tapped, dirndls and lederhosen will be worn. Before the festival even began in Bavaria, German-speaking Mennonites from Pennsylvania sought the freedom to practice their beliefs. And with this in mind, these Mennonite farmers migrated from Pennsylvania to Waterloo County, buying land from Loyalist Colonel Richard Beasley. The purchase included 160 farms. By the year 1800, the first buildings were built. In 1816, the settlement was designated the Township of Waterloo, and eventually in 1833 was renamed Berlin. And then finally, in 1912, Berlin was officially designated a city, but following much debate and controversy during the First World War, the city of Berlin changed its name to Kitchener. On the eve of Oktoberfest in Kitchener, I wish to honour the pioneers who moved to a new world, making the city of Kitchener what it is today. The names in our community are still visible in businesses, city streets and community buildings, EB, Herb, Bean, Bechtel and Weber. In the coming weeks, we not only celebrate the Bavarian tradition of Oktoberfest, but the pioneers as well. Thank you very much. Uh, further member statements, the member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, on September 27th, Ontario PC leader Patrick Brown and I met with representatives from Wilfrid Laurier University here at Queen's Park to discuss their proposal for a new university campus in Milton. Mil Laurier's Milton campus would be leading edge and would showcase environmental sustainability, planning excellence, and be a hub of innovation, culture, and learning. 
and discovery. It would also support the jobs and the economy of the future. It would also provide students throughout the Western GTA, including in our riding of Wellington Halton Hills, with another option to access high-quality post-secondary education close to home. According to the university, the 150-acre Laurier Milton campus would be the center point of a 400-acre Milton Education Village, a purpose-built, fully integrated community of education, research and commercialization, with complementary residential and commercial development and amenities. It's my understanding that land has been secured at no cost to government, land use planning is well underway, and infrastructure servicing has been secured. This means that the project can proceed to the planning design phase as soon as the provincial support is announced and the initial funding is allocated. As we all know, the region of Halton is one of the fastest growing communities in all of Canada. Its population is expected to exceed 1 million by 2041. That makes it an ideal location for a new university campus. The Halton Area MPPs, myself included, Halton Regional Chair Gary Carr, Regional Council, Town of Halton Hills Mayor Rick Bennett and Town Council are all very enthusiastic about this exciting proposal. I urge the government to get behind our vision of a Laurier Milton campus. Let's work together to build the promise of the future. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise today to talk on an important issue for my riding and that's a new Niagara Falls Hospital we were promised. In January 2014, it was announced that the Niagara Health System was going to build a new Niagara Falls Hospital. They rolled out a banner which today looks so faded you can barely read it and put a planning grant in place. Now, two and a half years later, the people of our community and hardworking people of the NHF have made some fantastic progress towards achieving that goal. I understand land for the hospital was donated, Community groups have worked hard to bring awareness to some of the issues around the hospital, and we expect at the NHS we will be submitting a phase two plan in November. But Mr. Speaker, we have a problem. In April of this year, the NHS submitted the phase one plan that laid out where the different units of the hospital would be placed. They have their phase two plan that now shows specifics of what they will go into each unit ready to be submitted in November, but they can't do that yet. They can't submit their Phase 2 plan because Phase 1 hasn't been approved yet. That is simply unacceptable. Mr. Speaker, this government needs to take action to ensure this new hospital is built quickly. The Phase 1 plan is in, so let's get it approved. When the Phase 2 plan is submitted, let's make sure it is approved as quickly and safely as possible. And more than that, let's make sure that when the hospital is built, the benefits are shared throughout our community. Let's use local tradespeople, engineers, architects, laborers to complete this project so we share in the economic benefits with their families. Let's source out material locally whenever possible to help keep our hard-earned tax dollars right here in Ontario. Simply put, Mr. Speaker, let's get this hospital built now. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, on October the 15th, the whole world will be marking uh, Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Day. Across Canada, the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, there will be a wave of light worldwide where there will be candles lit in uh, purple, pink and blue as they stop and reflect about the thousands of uh, women that have lost their babies through early pregnancy loss or infant loss or infant death. And these uh, days, uh, they will stop and reflect about the need for more inv investment in health care for pregnancy and infant loss, better care in hospitals, and better compassionate care at work. As you know, Mr. Speaker, over 30,000 Ontario women every year go through pregnancy and infant loss. 30,000 losses every year. Thankfully, we have now begun, uh, thanks to the Ministry of Health, to invest in pregnancy and infant loss. And this uh, October the 15th, we can at least rest assured that we've finally broken the silence about pregnancy and infant loss. So I want to thank the mayors of Ajax, Pickering, Toronto, Elliott Lake, Sudbury, Burlington, Barrie, Brockville, Timmins, and Ottawa for joining Ontario in recognizing pregnancy and infant loss through proclamations in their own cities and towns. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Thank you for the member's statements. The member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Well, thank you. Uh, guten Tag on Hertzlich Wilkeman. Speaker, it's time again to roll out the barrels at Kitchener Waterloo's Oktoberfest, Canada's greatest barbarian festival. As the second largest Oktoberfest in the world, it's a festival fact. Oktoberfest in Kitchener, Waterloo is wunderbar. Drawing on Waterloo's long history of German roots, our annual celebration has had something for everyone since the launch in 1969. The festival proudly hosts Canada's largest Thanksgiving Day parade while featuring 48 family, cultural and sporting events, and of course, 19 Festhallen to experience some true Gemütlichkeit. Whether German for life or just for a day, Festival goers will have a chance to join Uncle Hans, Tante Frida, their nephews Ziggy and Zaggy, Zaga, and over 700,000 visitors annually in our polka infused celebration. While the official opening keg tappings kick off tomorrow morning, followed by many more throughout the day, Speaker, the Oktoberfest team of 500 passionate volunteers has already been hard at work preparing and hosting pre festival events that recently saw the crowning of Vanessa Buttinger of Kitchener Waterloo as Miss Oktoberfest 2016. Vanessa is a lifelong Oktoberfest participant from walking with the Maypole float to volunteering with her father, Paul. And we all wish her the best in the rain representing the spirit of Oktoberfest this coming weekend throughout the year. So I, I invite ladies to get out your dirndls, gentlemen, don your leader hosen suspenders and hats and join me at Oktoberfest as we look forward to the first keg tap. I also invite you to join today in our festive call. Eins, wein, dry, zuga, ziggy, 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 hoi, hoi, hoi. Thank you. <laughs> if you hadn't have said that at the end, I would have ordered you to say it. <laughs> the member, final member, sta uh, member statements, the member from Windsor Tecumseh. Speaker, as you know, today there's a hurricane headed to Florida and other states, Hurricane Matthew. We give tropical storms and hurricanes names, but we don't do it for heavy rainstorms. No matter if they cause road closures, basement flooding, disrupt our lives, and leave us with millions of dollars of damage. Such was the case a week ago in parts of Windsor, Tecumseh, and Lakeshore. Many feel those torrential downpours in such a short period of time are a result of climate change. We've been seeing more of them in recent years all across Ontario, from Thunder Bay to Toronto, Windsor to Wawa. Weather experts tell us to expect more of them in the future. Our municipal sewer systems can't get overwhelmed. They can't keep up. There's simply too much water coming down in a relatively short period of time. Private insurance is a must if you can get it. Some people can't because of past flooding issues in their neighbourhoods. That's why we need to update Ontario's disaster relief programs. We need to lift restrictive provisions with rainstorms cause sewers to back up and municipal leaders to declare a state of emergency. Our provincial programs aren't meant to replace private insurance, but when water is such a magnitude it turns neighbourhoods into disaster zones, I believe the province should make exceptions. I call on the government to rethink provisions that were written in the last century update them to meet the realities of climate change and the heavy damage caused by unprecedented storms in this century. Thank you for the member's statements. The member from Mississauga, Arendelle. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on July the 8th, 2016, the world lost someone who had selflessly become a beacon of hope through his charitable works. Mr. Abdul Sitar Eddy was undoubtedly a true global humanitarian in every sense of the word and was even described by some as the angel of mercy, as a saint, and, wa and the world's greatest living humanitarian by the Huffington Post. He was also widely respected in my writing of Mississauga Arendelle. At the age of 11, Mr. Eddy's mother became paralyzed from a stroke. His experience caring, caring for her caused him to develop a system of social services. A donation allowed him to buy his first ambulance, which he drove around himself. Today, the ED Foundation runs the world's largest ambulance services, operating 1,500 of them and transporting an estimated 1 million people to hospitals each year. The ED Foundation has rescued over 20,000 abundant infants who have ED registered as a parent or guardian. 
He also filed a court case that ultimately won the right for Edmonton children to get the vital national identity card. The ED Foundation has rehabilitated over 50,000 orphans and trained over 40,000 nurses. It also runs more than 330 welfare centers in Pakistan and has established a welfare trust. The ED Foundation is now a multi-million dollar enterprise which operates relief operations all over the world. I'm really honored to pay tribute to this great humanitarian. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, President of the Treasury Board on a point of order. Thank you. And I wish to inform the House that I have tabled the 2015-16 public accounts with the Assembly. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. So noted. I thank all members for their statements. It's now time for reports by... Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I do have one more announcement. I beg to inform the House that, pursuant to Standing Order 98C, a change has been made in the order of precedent on the ballot for the private members' business, uh, public business, such that Ms. S uh, Sattler assumes ballot item number 11 and Ms. Armstrong assumes ballot item number 54. Reports by committees. Reports by committees. Last call for reports by committees.